Welcome. You're listening to the Good Girls Don't podcast with Ashley Ray and Verity Mansfield. This is the podcast where we smash those rules that we've been taught to follow both as men and women and burn the damn rule book. We're tackling the big issues and the issues nobody wants to talk about and we'll be fiercely feminist about it. This podcast is about inspiration, education, compassion and being the change that you need to see in this world. This podcast is for the trailblazers, the freedom fighters and the soul igniters and all the women just like you who are ready to break the good girl rules and be heard. We acknowledge the traditional custodians of Australia and its First Nations people on which this podcast is produced and consumed. We pay our respects to their elders, past, present and emerging. Get ready for the Back to Good Girls Don't Podcast with Verity Mansfield and Ashley Ray. Hello. <laughs> so, Ashley, we have someone very, very juicy to talk with today. Yes, this was a topic that was a really delicious one that I think we were both like, like we were just like raring to get into it and ask a lot of nosy, pointy questions because yeah, it's a bit of a taboo, isn't it? It's such a taboo and it's one of those things like both Ashley and I are in committed relationships and it's, it's always that conversation that comes, not it always comes up, but it's always like that conversation, you know, which as a good girl, you should never bring up. Um, and, you know, the idea of having an open relationship or an open marriage is so controversial and it does, it pushes so many people's buttons. But yeah, mine included. Time, yeah, but at the same time, there's so many people that do have open relationships and open marriages. So Ashley and I were so intrigued to find someone that would be completely and utterly open and honest with us and really let us like kick their brains and kind of get into a really, really juicy conversation about all those things involved in having an open relationship, like jealousy, you know, what constitutes as cheating, um, you know, how you deal, you know, with the guilt maybe um, and just really have a look at how one actually really does operate. Yes. And oh my God, it was really fascinating. And we could, and we probably will sit down and talk with Tani again, because we didn't, you know, this is such a delicious interview and the end of it, we were just getting into like some really big stuff. So we're going to have to talk to Tani again to speak more on those topics, but um, to give some context for this episode, I think we should <laughs> share a little about who the heck Tani is so that, you know, she's not just some random we found on the street <laughs> and put a microphone in front of no, her face. <laughs> she's absolutely amazing. So Tiny Beister is all about ch- um, chasing pleasure and breaking all the rules. She claims to be a rebel lover, creator destroyer, and hedonistic, sadistic bad bitch, which we absolutely love her owning this. It's oh, yeah. pretty contradictory. Um, and she's all about giving herself the permission to express all the parts of herself, which for us is just so ultimate in terms of breaking those Google rules. And she hasn't always been this apologetic, um, you know, or radical in herself or in her relationships. And it all started, you know, quite a few years ago um, when she, you know, she'd been married and she unexpectedly had this experience of falling in love with someone else. And she had no intention of ending her marriage and instead had to find a way to actually open her marriage up so she could pursue two relationships. And this is fascinating because I think so many of us have that fantasy in our head of like, what would it be like to have another lover without it being a problem? Like we want to have our cake and we want to eat it too. Yeah. And so many men, you know, like they talk about having fantasies about threesomes. And I think it's so important to challenge these ideas of, you know, 
are these the things that people really, really want? Like, do they really understand what goes on in order to create, you know, certain situations? And it was just fantastic, like, talking to Tani because as a result of her having this open relationship or opening up her relationship, she found herself on this incredible journey that awakened her sexuality, gave her more of an abundance of freedom, self-expression, and it also forced her to heal her past wounds and, and, you know, wounds and issues around abandonment and trauma and codependency. And now Tani finds that her marriage is more fun, more pleasurable and even more supportive than she ever could have imagined. But it doesn't go without, you know, Tani really opening up and sharing so much of the, the, the deep sort of journey both her and her partner had to go on in order to, you know, break that codependency, to break their traditional expectations around marriage and to really challenge what it meant um, to be with someone into a really deep, committed relationship at every single level. Yeah, and I think one of the big things that stuck out for me was in this interview, we really started off by talking about Tani's personal experience and really focusing on her and then sort of like partway through, the penny dropped for me that this actually went two ways. The hus- Her husband also um, is able to go and pursue different relationships as well and that was also a really huge, at least for me, that was a big perspective shift and going, oh, this is a two-way straight. Both of them are pursuing um, other relationships and encounters with other people. It's not just one of them. Like that really kind of blew my mind. Yeah. And I think especially like we um, on purpose as well, sought out someone who was in a long-term marriage, who was committed to their marriage and someone who was also um, raising a child within that marriage, because it really, I think that would kind of, you know, if everything we wanted to discuss, like this kind of hits all of those questions or opens up all, you know, a, a great platform for all of those questions to be asked that we know our audience like yourselves would want to hear and would want answers to. Like, how does it affect, you know, raising a child? You know, how do you explore the deeper values of intimacy, connection, transparency and freedom? Um you know, why it doesn't, you know, why having an open relationship doesn't actually make us sex fiends. Um, and that was really beautiful to talk to Tani about as well, about how they're not, you know, looking for sex. They're it's like the way I'll leave it for the episode, but how they do it is actually so beautiful. You've got to kind of sit there and just go, oh, OMG. I, I can see that. I can understand how that would work. <laughs> Yeah, and I think I'm pretty. I pretty much did that as well. I was like, "Ooh, it's not as." <laughs> yeah, and I think also, you know, really having a look at the difference between an open relationship and infidelity and cheating. And yeah, explains that so beautifully. Um, and what the landscape of having an open relationship honestly looks like you know not just the fun parts not just the mischievous parts but the the deep work that has to be done the dark stuff that comes up you know the serious shit they had to work out for themselves and with each other um and also how opening their relationship also help them to open up to understanding their own true self like facing their own fears and overcoming so much of their um, issues with the relationship within themselves but also the issues within their relationship as a couple so basically what we're saying is that we have the inside (laughs) scoop on polyamory (laughs) and it's you know it's really such a beautiful conversation I mean we also talked about you know jealousy shame guilt and fear of judgment when we do open up our relationship um and you know why serial monogamy is acceptable yet we believe in committing to one person for life like it's so ironic that you're it's okay to jump from relationship to relationship to relationship to relationship and have this serial monogamy but yet we also have this you know crazy idea as well that you have to commit to one person for life like two things kind of go against each other And, you know, the most beautiful, I guess, interesting thing or question is can we actually have our cake and eat it too? I want to say yes, because I really, really like cake. (laughs) 
Tani definitely says yes. And she also <laughs> said to us that she would not have her life any other way. She could never, ever imagine going back to having a monogamous relationship or a monogamous marriage. Um, so we love this conversation. It was seriously juicy. There were so many questions that we both um, just wanted to ask and to tear into and Tani is just so incredibly beautiful in how she presents you know all facets of the conversation in such a really beautiful way that it will completely and utterly challenge your preconceived ideas about having open relationships um, and we think you're absolutely going to love it. All of this is coming up in just a second on the Good Girls Don't podcast. Welcome to the Good Girls Don't Podcast, Tani. How are you? I am excellent. How are you? Pretty excited about today's conversation. I've got so many questions. Ash and I have been discussing this concept about open relationships and open marriage for, for quite a while and really trying to find the right person to talk to. So when the gorgeous Mia Moore sent us you as a contact, we just jumped at it um, because I think it's such a conversation that we don't talk about or it's talked about behind closed doors or it's talked about in, you know, sort of like circles, you know, on the edge of society kind of. It's a real taboo. Yeah. And we just don't believe that it should be because... And I'm sure you're going to prove this for us. It's such a in, you know, fascinating conversation to have. And marriage has been something that's been manipulated by religion for years. Like, you know, there's been times when it's been illegal. There's been times when it's been enforced. Um, and it's such an interesting concept as to how we think about marriage, how we, and how we can actually redefine our own marriages to find happiness, peace, and joy. And there's so many women I know that are in sexless marriages. Like there's men that complain about the lack of sex. There's women that complain about the lack of sex. You know, 50% of marriages end up in divorce. Uh, are we meant to be monogamous? Uh, like there's so many, like we have these philosophical conversations all the time, but we never really have honest conversations that actually explore um, all the different levels and actually unpacking um, open relationships so we're so excited to have you on and to be able to share your own experiences with us i'm excited i'm like i can't wait to hear all the questions you're going to ask me <laughs> i think so how did you actually how did you actually start having like how did it come to having an open relationship or an open marriage for you because you and your partner met when you were really quite young yeah so we met at high school um and we got together when we were 17 and to be honest, like my commitment was just to him. Like we, when we knew we wanted to be together, it just was one of those moments of resonance where we just wanted, we wanted the same thing for our future. And we just kind of like clicked together like puzzle pieces. So it just was like, that just was my future. And um, we ended up falling pregnant with our son when I was 21. So I had him when I was 22. So, yeah, like we became quite a young family. So that also bonded us together. And I guess like I just never looked outside of my marriage, like at anybody else or I wasn't looking for anything else. So it just honestly never occurred to me. I mean, like I think when we were really young, we might have gone, oh, hey, should we like have a threesome? But other than that, it was not really anything I ever consciously thought about being with other people or opening our relationship. So, yeah, when it... I don't know, I just like when it actually happened for me or happened to me, it was quite unexpected. So um, I basically fell in love with someone, which was not a plan. It wasn't anything that I was specifically looking for, but I just so believe that the universe just kind of like dangles all sorts of different carrots and treats in front of us and goes, hey, what about this? Would you like to try this on? And like that moment for me, it just felt so good. I like I'd done a lot of internal work leading up to that. Um, you know, a lot of learning to surrender my like achieving, pushing, shoving tendencies and learning to be a lot more in my feminine, a lot more in flow and trusting, you know, I guess what I call like the universe or, you know, what is coming towards me rather than deciding with my mind what things should look like. So yeah, this 
opportunity as such arose and you know my body resonance was like this is a yes for me like the connection I felt with this person which was just instant I was just like I can't shut this down like I haven't done all this internal work to you know close down things that feel good so yeah I just I believe in transparency and honesty so I just went straight to my husband and you know said like I'm having like these really intense feelings for this person. And he kind of had already picked it up anyway. He picked it up before I did, put it that way. <laughs> and it, <laughs> no, so, men don't notice things. <laughs> well, she like, she, it's by the way, it was a woman. So that was also extremely unexpected for me because like I'd never even kissed a woman. So it just like, it wasn't, yeah, it just was like one minute I was a monogamous straight woman and then, you know, the next minute I was like, oh, I'm, <laughs> I'm non-monogamous <laughs> and bi. It just was, yeah, I just had this like split moment where I just was like, oh, that like box of like marriage and only being with one person forever and, you know, it's got to look this certain way. I was like, I don't think that serves me anymore and I just kind of like lit that box up and burned it down. So wow. yeah, because it's so interesting is that how we think about marriage. Like it's this thing where apparently in front of God and the law and you have all of these witnesses. <laughs> um, kind of making me want to gag now. You know, kind <laughs> of um did this thing like, you know, right, it's just you and me, two people only, no one else can enter this, you know, transaction, this business agreement. Um, and there's something that's just very clinical. I think at times around marriage and it doesn't really allow us to be human. And I know for like, I am in a long-term relationship with my partner. Uh, we're both divorced. We're partnered. We've both got children and there's been, I think I took my daughter to a sport event and there was a really hot guy there. And I just went and said it out loud to my 10 year old. I said, it was like, Whoa, he's hot. And my 10 year old like elbowed me in the rear. She's like, mom, but you're dating someone. And I was like, babe, I'm not dead. <laughs> <laughs> that is such a good point. I still and have a I pulse. Think, you know, I, I have got like this, even children have this thing where you can't look at anyone outside of your marriage. Like it's such a strong message that our kids know it. And know yeah. these societal rules um, about what marriage should look like and how there's, you know, one person out there for everyone. And I think it's really dangerous. I think it's very dangerous um, bullshit that we have around uh, marriages and relationships. And I'm not saying that everyone should be polyamorous or everyone should be monogamous, but I think people need to have those conversations and explore um, for themselves what is right for them and to be able to have, yeah, that honest conversation. Absolutely. And, you know, obviously cultures sort of created this idea of monogamy and it's, you know, yeah, it's just like you don't even tell your partner if you're attracted to somebody. But, you know, like you said about not being dead, like we're human, we feel, you know, like we feel pleasure and we feel when we're resonating with somebody else. Like why are we walking around denying, you know, denying that human experience when there's just like so much like more joy and freedom and pleasure to be had by just being more open about it and you know like it's not like people have to be polyamorous just you can actually just create in your monogamous relationship just a like first step is just creating a little bit more of like an open conversation about you know like what your desires are or you know what kind of people you're attracted to Mm. You know, it's just kind of like that's the baby steps. It's just starting to disclose a little bit more about that. But I think a lot of monogamous relationships are very codependent. So that just even a conversation of like, oh, she was hot, you know, like that can often not go down well. Oh, yeah. I remember my partner, we were out for dinner and the waitress, this gorgeous looking um, waitress was at the table and she bent over to pass our drinks across this very wide <laughs> table and he ended up you know her he ended up directly looking down at top I don't, it wasn't really anything for him <laughs> he didn't really have any option let's put it that way because it was she was directly across across opposite him and he ended up making a joke about it and i remember hitting him but in that moment just being really aware that um 
that was my insecurities coming up. That had, it wasn't about his behavior at all. And just having that moment of like, oh my God, like we, we get into relationships and marriages especially, and we think that it's a contract to own someone. Yeah. And it's like up for the, it's up to our partner to make us feel secure and safe and wanted and needed and valued. Yeah. And it's just, it doesn't work. Like it's false. It's absolutely false. So when you got into, and um, when you first started having an open relationship, how did that affect your partner? Did he have, like, did he face issues of jealousy or insecurity? Um, like, did he have fears and insecurities that came up? And how did you, how did you navigate that? Yeah, <laughs> it was a hectic time. Let's put it that way. You know, people go, oh, was he, you know, like you said, it's like, oh, was he okay with it? I'm like, fuck no. <laughs> But then you also must have been faced with it. Oh, but it was a girl. Surely that's every yeah. dream. <laughs> uh, just like all of the things like you'd think you'd think your husband would just be like, hell yeah. Like, you know, bring another woman home. It just like, it wasn't all of that. It just triggered off all of his trauma and all of the stuff he had not dealt with and all of the things that he had not confronted in our relationship you know, it came up like all of the ways he didn't show up for me and the ways he didn't see me, like all of the things that I'd been trying really hard to work through and shift so that we could evolve in a partnership to the next level. And I had just been like spinning my wheels for years, just going, I'm not getting anywhere and I don't feel like you're meeting me here. So I feel like that's probably why I had this person come along so that I could get my next level of awakening because although he wasn't ready I was ready and crying mm -hmm. out for like the next step for me so it just kind of was like it forced it forced his hand in that sense so yeah. wow he was really good timing in the sense that he went and did like a men's initiation weekend it's called the man crime project so that was such amazing support for him. Like it just like it cracked his heart open the way he needed to open to start to move through some of the things that he like denied up until that point. And then he went to men's group like every week for six weeks, six months solid. So that was really great support for him, like outside of our relationship. And that's something that I've really learned being this far into a relationship with the same person yeah. is not doing every last single thing together, actually having our own time and having friends or having other places we can go to do our processing and work through some of our triggers and some of the stuff that comes up. Because otherwise yes. it would just, yes. Hallelujah. Otherwise we're, just, <laughs> otherwise we're just in each other's pockets all of the time and it just creates so much like desensitization to this person who you fucking yeah. be with. But then all of a sudden you're just a bit kind of complacent because they're just there all the time and it just doesn't have the same spark. So, you know, your partner going off and having like their trigger trauma tantrum thing and other people holding space for that and then coming back to the relationship, that's something that definitely helped. Yeah. Helped us so survive needed. the process, I think. And you know what? There was many, many times in that first year where it was like, okay, I think, I think we killed it. Like, I think the relationship is dead. Like, <laughs> Wow. Or just, you know, things that, you know, situations that happened and, but I don't know, we both just like really lent in at every point of the way and we just kind of transmuted the bullshit and came out the other side just a bit kind of like, whoa, like it, it didn't die. How, how are we all still here? So... <laughs> I can totally picture you standing there with this guy. I mean, I have no idea what your partner looks like and just being like, what the hell? <laughs> how come we're still here? <laughs> that, that was exactly what it was like. I can't tell you how many times I just, you know, like I dropped like that initial bomb, right? I just dropped this huge bomb in my relationship and I don't know, I guess it's a testament to us both like doing that deep work. It just like yeah. you come out the side every single time. And I was also prepared. I'm like, maybe, maybe we're actually done. Maybe we do need to complete our relationship. Maybe we've done our cycles together and this is kind of where we part ways and do our own thing. But just keep kept checking in and yeah, like at no point was it like completely done. Like we just still have 
just, I don't know, just some sort of like bond and connection that keeps us together and we both keep growing. This is a thing, like if one person's not growing and the other person's growing, that's where I feel like relationships split apart and it can't continue Absolutely. to work. 